Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Pro-life pharmacists in Illinois win a huge victory for the rights of conscience. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me today on Faith and Freedom is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this is a great victory. It comes from an appellate court in Illinois, and this case involves the rights of pharmacists not to have to distribute abortion or life-ending drugs uh, to those that ultimately uh, come to the counter. Uh, This is a situation that's put pharmacists in serious situations with regards to the rights of conscience. It's kind of like giving someone a poison pill, knowing that they're going to commit suicide with it, and you don't want to be complicit. Here you're giving somebody a pill to ultimately end the life of an unborn child, and your conscience says you can't do it. Uh, Yet uh, many places, these pharmacists have to struggle with this issue, and now we have a great victory in Illinois. Yeah, you know, and it seems like we uh, oftentimes have so much bad news to report. It's nice to be able to report good news. And, Matt, you know, I was living in Chicago in 2005 when uh, Governor Rod Blagojevich made this edict, uh, just the, the executive branch there, saying that pharmacists and pharmacies have to, must, violate their own conscience and uh, pro- provide these abortifacients rather than, you know, if they work at the CVS, rather than saying, oh, well, you know, there's a Walgreens across the street, uh, there's a pharmacist over, over there, but my religious uh, uh, convictions will not allow me to do this. Well, Governor Blagojevich said, you have to do it. This uh, 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 appeals court decision there is is moving in the right direction, but I can't help but notice the parallels here, Matt, between something that's that the, the executive branch uh, under the Obama administration has done with the HHS mandate. It seems that whether it's at the state level in liberal states or at the federal level, freedom of conscience is is under uh, attack, and freedom of and particularly on the issues of of abortion, life, and so forth. It really is, and certainly uh, everyone's heard now about the HHS mandate that's come from Kathleen Sebelius, the Secretary of the Health and Human Services, or HHS Department in Washington, D.C. She was the former governor of Kansas, and as a former governor of Kansas, she was very pro-abortion. She had Planned Parenthood invited to the governor's mansion. She honored uh, Tiller, the late uh, abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. Uh, She was very much supported by Tiller, very much supportive of him. Obama brought her to Washington, D.C. to head the HHS. She supports this mandate. Valerie Jarrett supported the mandate. President Barack Obama supports the mandate. And, in fact, it ultimately caused a split because Vice President uh, Biden opposed it, saying that it would ultimately be objected to by Roman Catholics, and he as a Catholic uh, was giving that perspective. Jim Daly The then chief of staff opposed it, brought in the then bishop, now Cardinal Dolan, to advise the president about it, around Valerie Jarrett's uh, back because she wouldn't allow it. And then that ultimately led to the split where he just simply resigned over this issue and is no longer the chief of staff. The the bishop, now cardinal, told the president this would collide with freedom of conscience. Notwithstanding, the president said, go ahead, Kathleen Sebelius, do it, forcing every religious employer in the country— to violate their rights of conscience and the free exercise of religion by telling them that they must fund abortion, contraception, and sterilization. So for Liberty University, the largest Christian university in the world, Liberty University is on a collision course with this, along with other religious employers. Uh, This is a line we can't cross because this will force Liberty to fund abortion. We simply can't do it. And we have a, a lawsuit that's pending that's going through the system challenging that very issue. Well, you remember uh, uh, Cardinal Dolan coming out and saying, we will not comply with this unjust law. We cannot v- violate the fundamental tenet of our faith that says that we can't. We, thou shalt not murder. 
And that's what abortion is. That's what abortifacients are. Uh, back to this Illinois case, it, it shows Governor Blagojevich, I remember at the time, saying, well, if pharmacists have a problem with that, maybe they're in the wrong line of work. Yeah. Maybe they don't need to be pharmacists. That And take that, look at what President Obama has said, what, what uh, Kathleen Sebelius has said. Well, you know, if you're a religious, a Christian, a Catholic organization that has a problem with, with abortion or abortifacients, you know, tough. Too bad. And I think it underscores that on the left, these hard left radicals like President Obama, like Blagojevich, like Kathleen Sebelius, have really a, a just a disdain for our First Amendment guaranteed freedom of religious expression and exercise. Well, they have a disdain for our religious freedom. They, they absolutely they, they do. do. And, and, you know, you've got a First Amendment that's explicit. It's not something that's generalized. It's an explicit amendment of the Constitution, the very first amendment of the Bill of Rights. That talks about free exercise of religion. You've got a federal law, too, that is the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It's a federal law yeah. passed by Congress that from federal perspective, which would include the HHS mandate, ultimately says you've got a right to free exercise of religion. But beyond that, you know, James Madison said free exercise of religion is a right that's unalienable. What he means is it comes from God, just like what is stated in the Declaration of Independence. We are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. It doesn't come from the First Amendment. It doesn't come from the Religious Freedom uh, Restoration <laughs> Act and that Congress passed. It comes from God. The First Amendment, the state and federal laws, they are just reflective of that pre-existing right. You can't take that right away. It no. is preeminent of all rights. But here, both uh, you know, Governor Blagojevich... Blagojevich and then President Obama, with abortion, they just have that ideology that just bulldozes everything to the contrary. Yeah, it makes you wonder if there's something in the water in Chicago or something, because, you know, here, Rod Blagojevich, who's now spending time in, in prison, on the one hand, President Obama, both hailing from Chicago, both putting ahead of our guaranteed constitutional freedom of conscience, uh, putting ahead of that uh, a, a the government— compelling, forcing, saying we have the authority and the power to unilaterally and arbitrarily force you Christians to be complicit in the killing of human beings. I mean, how that we have reached this point in our culture where where the left has is not just circumventing and going around the Constitution, but trampling underfoot, under jackbooted foot, Matt, the Constitution of the United States. We how we have reached this position in, in, in the United States of America, our founding fathers would roll over in their graves. Yeah, in this case in Illinois has been going on since two thousand five when Blagojevich issued this rule. Now, in 2011, a state trial court ruled that it violated the freedom of conscience guarantees by several laws, including the Illinois Health Care Right of Conscience Act. And then the court ultimately found that pharmacists are protected under this conscience act. And then secondly, the court concluded that the provision of so-called, quote, emergency contraception, close quote, it does not constitute emergency medical care. Because they were arguing, well, this was emergency medical care, and therefore you've got to be able to provide it. And if you're a pharmacist, you've got to be able to get it. First of all, let's look at this emergency contraception. You know, some people refer to it as the morning after pill. It's emergency contraception. Mm -hmm. So some people think, oh, well, you know, if you've already engaged in a sexual act and you didn't have contraception, then this can just be, oh, let's, let's take this pill. And it's like just having contraception. Yeah. Well, in many cases, this is not contraception. This is an abortifacient. Right. It causes an, abor an, an abortion. Mm -hmm. And so this is an abortion-inducing drugs, and there's different kinds of names for them. The bottom line is that they ultimately take the life of unborn children. Well, and, and the left engages in euphemisms. They have to get around the reality of things in order to push, push ultimately their – Agenda, and and this just shows you again, Matt, the sacred cow, a cow of of the left, abortion, killing human beings, and they couch it in these terms of reproductive freedom and 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 women's rights and contraception. But again, it's not enough just that they have the right. Any woman can go down to any pharmacy. If you go there and a pharmacist says, "Sorry, I can't do that under my freedom of conscience," you go across the street to the Walgreens. But that's not enough. They have to compel. They have to force everyone, Catholic hospitals, Christian hospitals, to actually affirmatively violate their freedom of conscience. It's not enough just to uh, prevent or, uh, or have the freedom in their minds right. to do it. They want to force you to be yeah. complicit yeah. in evil and, in exactly. this case, death. 
Give Liberty Council a call at 1-800-671-1776. We still have the challenge to Obamacare. The Supreme Court actually has directed the federal government to respond to our petition for rehearing within 30 days, and the time is now ticking. Uh, we may well be back at the Federal Court of Appeals with our free exercise of religion claim, putting us on a fast track to go back to the U.S. Supreme Court on this forced abortion funding under Obamacare. Stand with Liberty Council in prayer and also financial support. You can actually order our Patriots Handbook that is regarding pastors and political action. Get this out to pastors. We're sending it to tens and tens of thousands of pastors and churches around the country to counteract the myth of what Barry Lynn and his group are trying to do, and they're trying to silence pastors. We want to exchange the muzzle for a megaphone. Stand with Liberty Council. For more information, go to our website today at lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.